Okay. All right. So welcome. I call this my golden yogis class. I have these wonderful seniors <laughs> in my life. And I'm really grateful for all of you who come and join me in class today. Um, now, for those that might be watching a recording, you're going to see a gallery view for a time. So um, you can get a bit of a vision of the people that are also doing these yoga practices. And my intention is to be able to offer classes that are accessible for everyone at all stages, all ages of life. And these that are joining me in class today are such beautiful examples of resilient um, human beings that continue to move, breathe, and be present, even as we are moving into um, more older years. It becomes even more essential. So please take your time to, to find yourself in comfort on your back. This will be a full class where we're going to be moving from the floor to kneeling, prone and supine positions, and then coming to standing. Taking a few big deep breaths in through your nose and maybe sighing them out, out through the mouth as you're laying here on your back. You may find that you want to keep your knees bent for your low back comfort. Or you may find that you're comfortable taking your legs all the way down to the floor. And if it feels like your head is dropping back towards the floor, place a pillow or a folded blanket under your head so that your head is level. And bring your awareness into your breath. While we're sitting here and grounding, beginning to relax and feel our bodies, I'd like to take this moment to acknowledge the land that we are standing upon, the land that we are blessed to live, work, and play on as the unceded territories of the Blackfoot peoples. And as well to honor the lineage of the yoga practices that I am sharing with you today. Um, I've been blessed to study with Muggs McConnell, Dr. Nanda Balayogi Bhavanani, and others that have influenced me in smaller ways. All of this yoga I carry forward because of them and any mistakes that I make, they are my own. <clears throat> Let's bring this softness and steadiness into the flow of our breath and begin to create a balanced rhythm with your breath. So I'm going to invite you to breathe in and count the length of your inhalation. And then as you breathe out, <clears throat> excuse me, counting the length of your exhalation. and creating a steady, balanced rhythm so that the in-breath and the out-breath, the intention is to bring them into the same length. And as you inhale, bringing in a steady, smooth inhalation that fills the lungs. And as you exhale, a steady, smooth exhalation that empties the lungs. Let your body deeply relax as you acknowledge the sensations that are present in your body today.
Each in-breath is the opportunity to bring the mind into the present moment. And each out-breath, the opportunity to let go of something. Let go and relax a muscle. Let go of a thought or a distraction. To let go of an attachment. Notice how coming into the present moment by being present with each in and out breath can be so restful for the mind. Notice the emotions that are present in your body. Notice how they're felt. Notice how they can be constantly changing or they can be settled and stuck. Just like you relax a muscle, breathe in, being present with whatever emotion is present in your attention. Breathe out, imagine that you're letting go. So we're not trying to make it go away, but we're releasing any attachment, any holding to the emotion that is present within us. And acknowledging the state of our mind, just like we're acknowledging our body, acknowledging each emotion, acknowledge each thought, acknowledge the state of mind, if it's if the mind is busy and full, easily distracted, or maybe it's sluggish and leaning towards sleep. Be present with all these aspects of yourself. And commit to remaining present and to practice compassion honoring your body as we go. It's been a while since this group has been together and so you might be surprised at what you find in your body. Let's begin with a, a gentle awakening, wiggling fingers and toes and let that unfold into a stretch And then I invite you to roll over to your side and come into a comfortable seated position. Okay. So, um, have your legs out in front of you and your hands back behind you. You can bend your knees with your feet flat to the floor. And you have your feet just a little wider than your hips. And begin with some gentle rocking of your knees from side to side. Connect your breath and your movement together so that you're present in the sensations of your body as you begin to rock your knees. When that feels balanced from side to side, bring your knees or your feet back together so your knees and feet are quite close here. And then begin to rock from side to side again and notice how this changes the sensation, changes the function, the movement of the leg bones at the hips. So you're just gonna notice for yourself how that maybe changes the sensations. Continue to connect your breath and your movement together to remain present in your body.
Bring the knees back to center when that's balanced from side to side and extend the legs out in front of you. So if your hamstrings and hips are quite tight, you might need to lean back a fair bit. And if you find that your wrists are bothering you, you could sort of lean on this. That can be helpful if you're finding a fist here. And um, we're gonna start with rolling the legs in and out. So as you're there on that uh, prop, Dad, it might be easier off the prop to begin, but I'll leave that up to you. Just because you can lean back, you don't have to sit on that blanket in this moment. It might be easier on the floor. It might be. Yeah, and just lean further back. Yeah. Okay. So these are sitting jatis. We've been introduced to these in the floor series, in this library series. So we're gonna go through a few more. So go ahead and thump the backs of your legs and give them a good thump. We'll try to wake up whoever's in the floor below you. Okay, and this helps to move the fluid from the backs of your legs. Okay. And I'll bring the soles of the feet together. And now we start to come into where we might wanna have some height under our hips. So if you struggle, and here's how I know we struggle, is if your back is like, like this, you're stuck like this. So uh, using a little bit of height under your hips can be very helpful. And we're not going to be using this as an asana, so you, it's not, uh, we don't need to put anything underneath our hips for our comfort right now, but just do a gentle bounce. Now, um, Bev, be mindful here, since we don't really know what's going on in your hip, if you have response that sort of comes out of this that's really unpleasant, you know, maybe slow down, maybe adjust the feet a little further away. Just make sure you're not um, ignoring the pain signals for your body, but in the same breath, not being fearful of the information that arises in your body. Now we're gonna bring the right knee over, so it's resting on the left foot or onto the left shin, and you're sort of sitting on one hip. Okay, so this is rotating the top leg internally. And we're now, make sure you sort of zip up awareness into your low belly and just gently twist around. So you're taking your right hand over to your left knee, and you're just gently twisting around and take a breath or two in this twist. And then release the gaze with an in-breath and come back. So we come back sort of to this butterfly position where we began. And then we fold the left leg over. So the knees can be together, okay? Or you can make it a little broader. And now your left hand comes to your right knee and you gently twist around. Now bring your hip, that back hip with you. So the hip is actually lifting and following the twist with you. Taking several breaths here. And then inhaling to come back around. Exhale to release, bring yourself back into this butterfly position. Now, I have blocks at hand here, so I'm sitting on my bolster, on my pillow. And then you might find that if you have pain, in this particular position, using rolled blankets is an option if you don't have yoga blocks to prop your knees so you can be in this position. Put, throw, throw pillows, um, roll towels, roll blankets, books, whatever might be useful so you could be in this position without pain, right? And usually we have pain when we're hanging in space, okay? And the other thing that allows you to change that what it feels like in your hips is to move the heels further away or to move them closer. The closer they are in, the more pulling there is on the inner thigh and on the pelvis, and a little bit more of a stretch. So as a warm up here, you're gonna be mindful. As this is a big pull on the inner thighs, bring the hands up into the air and inhale to reach forward. And then exhale to come back. And so you're just, you don't have to strain. This is just a warming. Keep your hands level with the, with the, like keep them parallel. Don't let them drop or lift. Just moving forward and back. No straining. Do it with your breath. Inhale to reach forward. Exhale to come back. Both 
Bev and Dad are using their neck to reach. Try to imagine the pelvis just rocking forward and coming back. There we go. One more time. Inhale to reach. And exhale to come back. Okay, releasing the arms. You might need to use your hands on your knees to draw your knees back in. Okay. And you might find that it feels really quite nice after that to give the knees a bit of a rock from side to side. Okay. Now extend the legs out in front of you. Now if you're sitting on a blanket here, you're going to want to use something underneath your knees to make sure that your knees are not moving into any hyperextension. So um, if you're sitting on it, and you might be okay there, mom. So if it's only a small wedge, likely you're not moving into hyperextension in the backs of your knees. But if you sit on one, hmm? no, you don't have to. If you find that you don't need it, and the only reason why you would sit on a on a, a bit of a wedge is if you find that you're really stuck under here, and even that can be modified by bending the knees a little bit so the blanket underneath your hips is an option as are some sort of support a roll towel or a blanket underneath your thighs and we're going to raise the arms up here okay so try to make sure your leg bones are facing up so you need to roll the leg bones so the feet are facing up now be mindful right we're not straining we're doing this with our breath we're inhaling to come forward and exhaling to come back. So this does not need to be a strain. We're simply warming up the backs of the legs, connecting breath and movement together. And coming back as you're ready here, release. And then you can come into a comfortable seated position. So that might be cross-legged for some of you. It might be cross-legged, okay? <laughs> and then you can also use the blocks under your knees. Butterfly is a really good option as well. And if you found that you were more comfortable with your legs out in front of you, go ahead. Putting that little bit of height underneath your hips can make a big difference in terms of your ability to remain seated comfortably. Okay, so want to bring your hands behind your head okay. and attempt to sit up tall here so firmness below the navel be mindful as you go through this you're connecting breath and movement and you're just sort of swimming your way forward slowly coming down rounding the spine and then you're gonna swim your way back up now make sure you're moving mindfully you're just going to swim your way up and swim your way down and just continue to sort of go through this gentle movement. Down and then back up. And working your way back to upright. Releasing the hands down when you're ready. Okay. Let's roll our shoulders up, back, and down. We'll go through a few of these shoulder rolls. Up, back, and down. How's that shoulder been? A little stiff? No, I'm watching. Oh, the cat. <laughs> My cat is at the door. <laughs> okay, and go in the other direction. Okay, and then the last that we'll do for our shoulders here is to give yourself a big hug, put the right arm on top, and clap, grasp towards your shoulders. Now, check with your posture, but a firmness below the navel. Gently lifting the elbows up and drawing the shoulder blades down. Now, if your ear, if your shoulders are shrinking up towards your ears, you're kind of missing the stretch for the back. So engage the shoulder blades down the mat as you lift the elbows gently up and breathe here. 
and then exhale to release the elbows down and inhale open them up and bring the left arm on top and give yourself a good hug do your best to be in a neutral spine so your sweat firmness below the navel inhale to lift the elbows draw the shoulder blades down keep space between your shoulders and your ears and then slowly release. Okay, and you might find that you want to give yourself a bit of a shake out or roll. If you have a floating collarbone, do what you need to to bring that collarbone back into place. Okay, when you are ready here, Lorraine, you'll kick in, so make sure your, your bones are all back in place. We're going to move into some neck warm up okay so we want to start with firmness below the navel lengthening the spine and drawing the jawline gently in and then inhale to look to the right and exhale to look to the left and please just pay such close attention there's a lot of subtle information in the body in this very simple movement kind of notice the different pulling on the jaw on the skull on the shoulders You can notice how there might be one direction where you can turn the head a little further than the other, and that's just fine. Just notice it. When that's balanced, come back through the center, and we'll move into inhale to lift the chin and the gaze, and exhale to lower the chin and the gaze. And you're going to continue with this. Inhale, lift. Exhale to lower. When we lift the gaze up and we move into the neck extension, imagine that keeping length in the neck, even as you let it start to drop back, don't let the bones collapse against each other and move in a range of motion that is appropriate for your health and come back through to center when you are ready. Okay. All right, so switch which leg is in front if you are cross-legged, just to bring a bit of symmetry into the body. Now, if you've had different things going on, knee replacements, that sort of thing, you might find that it feels quite different in the body, including if you have um, stuff going on in your back, even crossing the legs can make things quite different. So you might find that you need to use your props in a different way, and that's just fine. So we'll go through seated cats and cows and um, some different spinal movements. So before we begin, we need to have this firmness below the navel, growing tall, lengthening the spine. And then when we move, we're keeping space in the vertebrae as we do. So curl the tail under as you start to breathe out. Your hands on your knees can help you as you gaze down towards your belly, rounding the back. Then with an inhale, you start the pelvis rolling forward, lengthening the spine as you arch the back, bringing the gaze up. And you're just going to follow your breath movement. Exhale to curl under, rounding the back. Inhale, roll the pelvis forward, arching the back as you gaze up. Now, if this causes pain, please make sure that you're moving with lots of um, space in the vertebrae. You're not sinking, but you're maintaining a sense of integrity along the spine. You can also make the movements smaller. If you have um, bulging discs, sometimes you'll have pain through this movement. And so it's important not to ignore the pain that you might have in the spine. Maybe just move in a smaller range of motion. How do you know whether or not you're okay to move with the pain that you have? Is your breath, are you able to control your breath? You can ask yourself, are you safe? How do you know if you're safe? Can you relax your body, relax the tensions in your body? Can you remain present in the practice? 
These are all ways that we can be with pain without reacting to pain. There may be times that it is appropriate to change what we're doing and times where it's appropriate to continue. So coming back through to neutral as you're ready. And let's move into some of the lateral flexion. So inhaling, we can raise the right arm up into the air. Sit bones stay rooted, firmness below the navel, lengthen the spine as you tip to the side. And then exhaling here. And then inhale your way up. Exhale to release. Inhale, raising the left arm up, tipping to the side. So if you have some shoulder dysfunction, right, that using the breath and the core to help you raise the arm can be very helpful. Hand on your head is an excellent option, as is instead of bringing the hand up, you could place the hand on your shoulder, lifting the elbow. So there's different ways and the hand can also remain down and you just sort of place the hand on your hip as you go from side to side. So that's an option. Okay, and then coming back through to center and releasing here. All right, so we're gonna come down onto our backs and we're gonna be doing a, a, a little series here on our backs and then our tummies. And so I'd like to give you the view of what we're gonna be doing on our back before you come down to your back. So if you can just give me a moment and I'll do a, a demonstration here for you. So this is the Ika Pada Uttana Pada Asana. It's <laughs> a mouthful. So this is the one-legged, uh, so single-legged lift. That's what this is. So when we're down on our back here, one of the things that we need to be mindful of is that we have this neutral spine. So when I lift my leg into the air, that I'm not rocking my back down. And I'm actually engaging my core. And we're gonna do it with our breath. So we're gonna inhale, two, three, four, and then I'm gonna pull my toe. And I'm gonna exhale, lowering, two, three, four. So we're gonna do that twice. And then the third time that we raise up, we're gonna hold the leg up. So keeping the other knee bent means that this remains a really accessible exercise for most people. The core still needs to work, but it's, it's, it's quite accessible. If you want a little more challenge, then you would work with the other leg down and it becomes a lot more work where you're inhaling two, three, four, hold the toe towards the shins, brief pause of the breath, exhaling down, two, three, four. So we're gonna do the right side first, then we're gonna do the left side, and then we're gonna relax, okay? So please come on down onto your back, and I will be up and observing my students here. So once you're down on your back, um, you can um, sort of assess yourself where your core stability might be. And engaging the strength of the core, let's do this together, okay? So inhale, raise the right leg, two, three, four. Pull the toes towards the shins, point the toes and exhale down, two, three, four. Repeating same leg, inhaling up, two, three, four. Pull the toes towards the shins, exhale, point the toes, lower down, two, three, four. Coming up again, this time we're gonna stay up. Inhaling to raise up, two, three, four. Now pull the toes towards the shins, lengthen the leg, breathe here. If you really, really struggle, you could hold on to your pants or you're behind your thigh, but we're working quite hard here. And then here, you'll now lower down, point the toe and exhale, lower down, two, three, four. Now relax briefly. Repeating over onto the left side. So inhaling, raising up, point the toe to lift, two, three, four, pull the toe towards the shins, Point the toe and then exhale down, two, three, four. 
Inhale to rise up. Two, three. Pause, point the toes, exhale down. Two, three, four. Inhaling up. Two, three, four. Pull the toes towards the shins. Now you're gonna keep your leg here. Lengthening the back of the leg, breathing smoothly and steadily. You may feel a lot of energy movement. You might feel a sense of heaviness. You might feel a sense of thrumming. Be present, use your breath. And then exhale, point the toe, lower down. Two, three, four. And relax here. Your knees can be bent or you could lengthen your legs down to the floor and notice how you feel as you relax deeply. From here, we're gonna be rolling over onto our stomachs. And so what I'm gonna ask you to do is to roll over so that you're able to see me and to observe while I give you a demo before we go through the practice together. So we're gonna move into the um, single-legged locust. So uh, here, you'll be down on your tummy and your hands are gonna come back down beside your hips and your gaze is to the floor. So um, I know, Dad, with your, after your open heart surgery, sometimes that scarring on your rib cage could be really tough on you. So you could also possibly work from this position where you have your arms under here. But traditionally, the hands are back here. And if your body allows you, the palms are down. Some body types mean that the body, the hands will have to be up. The other option is to bring the arms under the body. So my palms are down or up while my arms are under the body, which might actually lessen the pressure on the chest. So this is the setup. Hands are either down beside you or under the body. My gaze is staying down. And when I inhale, I'm gonna raise the right leg. Two, three, four. And I'm gonna exhale the lower. Two, three, four. Okay, and I'm gonna do that twice on the right side and the third time, keep the leg up while I breathe, and then we'll lower and repeat on the other side, okay? So this is a wonderful practice for um, uh, bringing health into the lower back and the, and the hips, and also for kidney health. Okay, so your hands are down beside your hips. Let's do this together, either palms down or palms up. Inhaling to lift the right leg to three, four, exhale down, two, three, four. Inhale to raise, two, three, four, exhale to lower, two, three, four. This third time we're gonna keep it up. Inhale to rise, two, three, four, lengthen the leg as you hold the leg up and breathe steadily here. And then exhale to lower down, two, three, four. Now relax briefly. And moving on to the left leg, okay? So inhaling to raise, two, three, four. Exhale to lower, two, three, four. Inhale to lift, two, three, four, exhale to lower, two, three, four. This third time you're keeping it up. Inhale to lift, two, three, four. Breathing steadily here as you hold the leg up. Exhaling to lower, two, three, four. Relaxing here. From here now, we're going to transition to bring some relief into the back, into child's pose. So from your tummy, bring your hands under your shoulders, slowly pushing yourself back to come into a child's pose. So child's pose, the toes are together and the knees are either together or apart. 
and your head comes down towards the floor, your hips drop back towards your heels. So it's okay if your hips don't make it to your heels and it's okay if your forehead doesn't make it to the floor. Use your hands or a folded blanket or block so your forehead is resting on something comfortably and your weight, even if it doesn't come back to the heels, is dropping backwards in that direction. Breathing here and feeling the balance come back to the back, lengthening out the muscles that we have just brought tension into. And from here, you're gonna rise into a kneeling position. So this position here, you might find that your knees really need some support. So you can use a folded blanket underneath your knees, and I'm gonna give you a seated option for those that struggle on their knees. So here I've just folded a blanket and put it underneath my knees, and I'm going to extend my right leg out to the side. Okay, so if you wanna just watch for a moment while I give you the demo so you're not, you don't have to be on your knees, you can just sit comfortably for a moment to observe. So here in this position, this is a pose called Parigasana or gate pose. You wanna make sure that your uh, thigh bone is straight up and down. So when, when you come into this, just watch that the knee is not out to the side. And um, for those that have uh, hip issues, this extension out to here can be a little much. Right? Sometimes it'll make you look like this. And if that's the case, go ahead and bend this knee, pointing that toe out, and that will make this just that much more accessible. But traditionally, the toe is pointing slightly forward or to the outside. And then when we come into this, we're gonna zip the belly up, and you can raise the arm up into the air or place it on your hand, your shoulder, or your hip. And then we tip, and we're gonna lengthen over to the side, okay? So this is the posture breathing into here. Now, if you can't be on your knees, you simply transition so that you're sitting on the floor, this leg is folded in, this leg is out, and you're gonna be turning away from the long leg to come into the pose, okay? So that's your option if you find that kneeling doesn't work for you. So if we can come together, we can do this together, I can observe you, so put some height under your, or some cushioning under your knees if you need, okay? And extend the right leg out to the side. Now, Bev, I don't know if you saw it, that like I don't know what's going on in your hip, but the option to change is to bend the knee and point the toe out instead of keeping the knee straight and pointing the toe forward. Okay, so that's a nice option here if you're struggling in this position. Okay, you can play with the angle that you plant the foot at. So it doesn't have to be pointing straight forward. It could be maybe slightly out to the side, but feel the four corners here. And here we want to zip up our belly, root our tailbone down the back of our legs, and then we're going to inhale to raise the left arm into the air. Sorry. Uh, yep, there you go. You got it. All right. Now, don't allow for rotation. Hand can be on your head or your shoulder, and you're going to lengthen the left side of your body and tip over to the right. So coming into the side bend, just take a breath or two here into the side body. And then you inhale to come back, exhale to release, and then we switch our knees. Okay, so depending on what's going on in your body, you might find that you need to set up differently. So the option is to keep the knee bent, and then you do the exact same exercise, but with the knee bent, or to have the leg extended, toe is pointing forward or slightly out at a 45 degree angle, somewhere in there, knee is mum, Bring your knee directly underneath oh, your hip. Sorry. No, that's okay. That's that's my job. I watch for you, right? And then inhale to raise the right arm up. Make sure you've brought the ribs in and the tailbone is down. And then you're gonna inhale and lengthen into the right side of the body, taking several breaths. And so these these side bends are so good at balancing out the lateral side of the body. So for those with scoliosis those with tight hips, this can be such a good thing to do and it improves our breath health as well. Inhaling to come back up and exhaling to release. 
Okay, so a brief moment in a child's pose will help to balance out the spine again. And just a brief, a brief moment there. And we're gonna start to come up to standing. So transitioning from the floor to standing can be done in lots of different ways. So if you have the toe flexibility, you could tuck your toes and just shift your weight back until you can come into this position here. If the toe flexibility isn't there, you can step one foot forward, lifting and coming up. You can also use a chair to come up. And I'm gonna ask you to bring your chairs forward as we come into a forward bend. Actually, it's our inversion practice. So have a chair in hand with, oh, this big, I what that was. Have a forward bend with the, or sorry, have the chair seat facing you. So you've got it here. And we're gonna practice the downward facing dog. And this is our inversion. So I want you to really try to feel how your, your chest, or your head is getting a little lower than your hips. So even if it doesn't, you know, there's still a downward flow of the blood in this. So if you have shoulder uh, concerns, like this sort of movement isn't really accessible for you, just be mindful that as you step back, you're bringing this wonderful shoulder extension in. So just observe for a moment and I'll give you a quick down low of all the different things that you need to keep in mind. So when we come into the down dog, we wanna come out of a rounded back position and we wanna actually feel like our sit bones are widening. So our hamstrings and our back are the two things that really <laughs> limit that. So bend your knees a fair bit and imagine that you're really lengthening the side body as you press back. So your feet are hip distance and here you are um, really imagining making a long line from your hands to your hips, okay? And then we'll do that a couple times. You can give yourself a break and come in and out of that a few times. So have your feet well grounded. Keep knees or feet or hip distance, feet are parallel. So have a look, those are a little, little outside of the parallel, Dad. So adjust your feet just a bit. Yes. And so you're dropping this hand down because the shoulder is bothering you. Is that why? So come forward, bring both hands up. And let's use this opportunity to stretch the shoulder, but you're just not going to come back so far. Okay? So bend the knees more. Use it as the opportunity to work with what is in your shoulder. So yeah, try to feel a sense of symmetry and balance. Breathe into what you're, you're doing. And then give yourself a break. Come forward. Take a moment to rest before you come back into the pose. So this is a wonderful variation of the downward facing dog that gives us the extension through the shoulders without the weight bearing. Such a wonderful way to also experience getting upside down. And then slowly coming back forward, step your one foot forward, second foot forward, and rise to a standing position. Okay, so from, we can continue to have our chair out in front of us, and we're going to come into what is our uh, balance poses for the day. So what we'll start with is a bit of an exploration of setting up the back in these, I like to we call them micro movements to sort of explore how subtle shifting of the shoulders in relationship to the hips can really change our core stability. So we'll step back with the right foot and I'm as if I'm standing on, uh, like if I'm from here, you can see my feet here, um, I'm on railroad tracks so, or sort of cross country ski tracks and when I step back I just want to make sure that I don't accidentally narrow my stance too much. I'm going to remain on that set there. So from here, I'm just going to adjust my camera just a little, just to make sure that everyone can see my hands and arms. Oops, uh oh, that happened. Okay, it's better maybe, maybe, maybe not. Okay, all right, so from this position, we're going to step back with the right leg, and I'm going to keep my heel lifted. And for many people, this is a big difficulty is to keep the heel lifted. So you might want to have a block or a book to prop 
your heel on. So you can practice keeping this heel lifted. My hips are going to be square. My front knee is bent. So you would mark your own hips and just check that your hips are both, your hip bones are even. And then place your hands on your low back. Okay, so let's do this together. So step back, so from this Tadasana position, step back with the right foot, keeping the back heel lifted with or without a block, and place your hands on your low back. Okay, now let's just bend the front knee and lift through the back thigh. So lift through the back thigh. Now bring your shoulders slightly forward and feel your hands change under your back. And then bring your shoulders back of your hips. And you're just going to kind of go through this little small range of motion. And you're going to try to find where there is a slight extension. So here's neutral, here's flexion. Somewhere behind that is the slight extension. So you're in a little bit of a back bend. Zip up your belly. Now to turn it into a balance pose, we can inhale, and if it's okay with our shoulders, we can raise the arms overhead. You can also keep your hands on your hips and just start to track your gaze upwards to make it a bit of a balance challenge. Exhale to release. Now once again, bring your hands to your back. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the chair in front of us to explore coming into warrior one. Or sorry, uh, warrior three, here we're dressed at three. So we want to feel, so if this is extension, this is flexion, somewhere under my hands is my neutral spine. And from here, I'm going to imagine that I got a plank tied from my hips or on, the, on my back here so that when I lift up, I am not bending here. I am floating, and you're going to place your hands onto here and try to lift the heel. Keep your hips facing down. Keep your hips facing down. And breathing here. If you really want to challenge your balance, you could release your hands from the chair and go out like wide, like an airplane. And then a lot of the fun is being able to lower the hands down and try to float your heel down with control. It's going to feel quite nice. Inhale, step the feet together. Shake out your hips. Give yourself a bit of a break. Is that doing all right there, baby? You holding up? Thumbs up? <laughs> okay, so you can do, like these can be done in steps. So you do not have to go into a place where your body is not ready. You just come to the place where there's enough effort and challenge and then work with your breath there. So let's begin now on the other side. So we're going to step back with the left foot. Now our hips should remain square so you can use your hands on your hip bones. Your back heel should remain lifted. So if you struggle keeping the back heel lifted, use a little block under the heel. Okay. Now if you have a tendency to bend the back knee, Keep straightening, extending the back knee, okay? Now place your hands on your low back and explore this micro movement of going a little too into flexion, going back into extension, just exploring the changing muscles under your hands. And then find where you're in a bit of extension, zip up your belly, and then begin to inhale, and if appropriate, raise the arms overhead. Keep your belly zipped up so your core is quite firm. And if you want to challenge your balance, you can start to track the gaze upwards. Breathing steadily and evenly here. Exhale to release the hands, bring them back to your back. And then find that neutral spine. Like you'll feel like you're strongest in this position. You're going to find a neutral spine. And then using your breath, you're going to inhale. Your standing leg knee can be quite bent. See if you can lift that back heel up. Just keeping a nice strong straight line from your hip, from your back of your head down to your heels. Okay, keep drawing the shoulders down the back, opening the chest. 
and be, you know, a lot of our balance challenge is not about physical balance, but about our emotional, mental balance. I'm going to put my hands on the middle of your back. I want you to engage the muscles of your back towards my hand. So roll your shoulders up front. Yeah, so that you brought in the strength. Okay, and then try to float your way back down. Inhale to step the feet together. Now let's take that down dog to balance out the hips. So you take your hands on your chair, step your feet back, keep our hip distance in parallel, bend the knees, and take a nice stretch, lengthening out the back side of the body. And then use your in breath to come towards standing. Oh, that must feel good. <laughs> okay, so we'll just step, we can set our chairs off to the side. We're done with them for the day. And we're gonna transition to the floor. So you might need your chair to transition to the floor, or you can just come down mindfully. There's a few different ways, right? You could uh, bring your hands down and step one knee back and the other back. Or you might find that you're able to sink down and bring your hips to your heels. And then sit down to the floor. Look at you go. All these wonderful ways. Bevy, you're looking nice and mobile over there. Up, down, way to go. <laughs> our day with a twist and the twist that we're going to do today might be nice to have a little bit of height under your hips so you could use a folded blanket or a pillow and just bring a bit of height under your hips your legs are going to be out in front so the higher your hips are up the more you might need support under one knee so when you go to extend this leg out if I'm up real high I might find that I want to put a block under my knee so that I'm not moving into hyperextension in this knee here, okay? But you might not need it, so we'll see. So we're gonna, uh, right leg extended, left knee drawing in as close as is comfortable, and you're trying to sit up tall. Now, here's what I do, and I'm gonna ask you to observe for yourself, that when we start to go through these progressions, when, if and when your sit bones really change underneath you or you end up in a crooked back position, you're compensating and it's better that you reverse and take a step back until your spine is nice and tall and to twist from this tall spine. So this is step one, so you could stay right here. You might also want to explore taking your foot across the leg and see how that feels, okay? Now, if your sit bones are evenly square, you can still sit tall with some measure of um, uh, equanimity. You can stay here or you go back to where you were. The third step would be to take this bottom leg and bring it underneath the back hip. So, <laughs> not happening. <laughs> not happening. And that's okay, right? So, wherever you are. So, I'm going to reverse to here. And we're going to sit up nice and tall. And it's our right hand will be on our left knee. And the other hand is going to come back behind you to be on the floor. So, since I'm on a bit of height and I have short arms, I'm going to use a block underneath my hand to help me. And you're going to turn your belly towards your thigh. You may actually be able to hook an elbow, but you might need to hold on to it with your hand. And as you're sitting tall, exhale to twist around. Take several breaths in your twist. Breathe here. Twists are so good for nourishing the nerves of the spine, we're putting lots of compression at their exits out from the, from the vertebrae. So when we release, inhale to release the gaze and unwind, it's a bit of like blood flow now flowing into where all of that compression was. Go ahead and extend the legs out in front of you and let's try the other side. Now you might find that it can be quite different from side to side, so it's worth exploring the progressions on this side. So you could see about taking the leg across and you might, it might, you might find it more accessible here. You might even find it accessible to bring this leg underneath you if you wanted to try. But wherever you are, <laughs> there you go. Okay, 
Wherever you are, sitting tall, twisting around. With each in breath, imagine lengthening the spine. Each out breath, you can move gently into the space that you might find is there. Feel how your breath is so much a part of what is happening in the twists. The changing pressure in the abdomen. And then release the gaze and unwind. Bring the legs out in front of you. Bend your knees. And you can give yourself a nice hug, dropping your nose towards your knees as we balance out both sides of the spine again. And now it is time to come to our backs for Shavasana. Yay! Everyone's favorite part. <laughs> so if you have the ability to orient your head towards the north end of your mat, I invite you to do that. If you have that um, ability to align your mat from north to south, that can help to um, align our bodies with the natural electromagnetic <clears throat> pulsing of the earth. You could use a blanket under your head or a pillow under your head. And here is a great um, uh, uh, chance to use your bolster or some pillows behind your knees. You'll see you know, those that have been coming a long time know exactly what they want and they get themselves set up. It's also quite cooling. So if you find that you're already a little cool, you might want to put some layers on as we begin to rest here on our backs. You might find that you need to keep your knees bent, but sometimes the bolster behind your knees will be enough to provide the relief that your back needs. So just keep exploring lengthening the legs down as you relax and as your tensions relieve from your body, you might find that that becomes more and more accessible. As you are resting here on your back, observe what may have changed or shifted from the first part of the class where we had laid on our backs and tuned ourselves into our body, our emotions and our mind. The intention of an asana class, the yoga, is to Give us what we need to be able to release tension, both physical and mental emotional tensions. Continue to use your in-breath to arrive into your body and your out-breath to relax deeply. Releasing all the tensions from your body. The breath is moving on its own. We're not controlling the breath. But notice that as you relax, your breath becomes softer, more subtle, it slows, and may even have places where it stops entirely. Let the breath do what it does. Bring your mind all the way down into your toes. And imagine that you could feel the life force tingling in your big toes. So this is a visualization. So you're going to imagine you can feel the tingle of the life force in your toes, a fizzing, buzzing sensation of life. Focus on your big toes. Try to perceive, envision this tingle. The 
letting the tingling sensation spread to include all 10 toes. And then become aware of the tingling sensation in your feet. As you relax your feet deeply, can you perceive the tingling of the life force in your feet? Become aware of the tingling sensation traveling up the legs into your ankles, your calves, and your shins. So everything below the knees, feeling them tingle. Become aware of your knees and feel the tingling force in your knees. Feel the tingle now in your thighs. Feeling the fronts and the backs of the thighs, the inner and outer thighs. Imagining the tingle now in both legs. Focus your mind at the base of your tail, kind of the tailbone in between the buttocks. And imagine the tingle gathering there at the base of the spine. And imagine the tingle traveling up along the spine. So the whole spine is tingling with life force. Feel the life force fill your belly, your chest, the tingling of your organs, your heart, your lungs, your whole torso tingling. Bring your awareness into your fingers and feel each of your fingers starting to tingle with the life force. Feel the tingle, feel your palms and the backs of your hands. So your hands are full of the tingle. Feel the tingle spread into your wrists and your forearms. Into your elbows. And into your upper arms. Flowing into your shoulders until the tingle in your arms merges with the body tingle.
Become aware of the tingle in your neck, your throat, the tops of your shoulders tingling. Become aware of the tingling life force in your jaw, your mouth, your lips, your cheeks, around your eyes, the tingling life force of your eyes. Aware of the tingling around your ears and in your ears, your whole face tingling. Let your mind come in to the back of the head where it's resting and feel the tingling life force at the back of the skull. And perceive the tingling at the crown of the head. And then perceive the tingle at the forehead. Feel the whole body tingling. Rest deeply, restoring yourself in this life force for the next couple of minutes. Just rest deeply, remaining present, continuing to relax into the tingle that is there in your body. Gently deepen your breathing. And with the deepening of your breath, return awareness back into your senses. Becoming aware of the room, the space around you. You can begin to become aware of your body and move it mindfully, wiggle fingers and toes. Eventually awakening with a stretch. Bending your knees, perhaps bringing the knees in towards your chest. Take your time to roll over to your side and spend several moments on your side. This transition time is important to slow down. I invite you to contemplate something that you're grateful for. 
just take a moment in gratitude. And then when you come to a seated position, bring your gratitude with you. And we'll finish together in a seated position. Bring your hands into heart center. A quote to finish our class today from St. Teresa of Avila. Every part of the journey is of importance to the whole. Let's finish our class with an OM. Breathing out. Breathing in.